like maybe most of the time uh, there are a few aspects uh, which i think uh, you will be having uh, issues with like uh, you will be having restricted physical activities uh, most of your working time will be uh, in front of a desk i am in front of a laptop or a mobile so you most probably will be uh, facing issues in the future uh, mostly with your neck and back so all those comes under musculoskeletal disorders like uh, regarding your muscles joints and uh, stuff like that so the common problems which we see uh, among software engineers or people uh, working with a laptop are uh, cervical spondylosis or uh, simply neck pain then you will be having issues with your lower back then problems due to muscle wastage like for example when you have a limited amount of physical activity uh, usually our body tend to have lesser uh, muscle bulk you may be um, bulky but at the same time you will be having less muscle bulk muscle mass yes, muscle mass so the problem what comes there is uh see you might have seen uh, skeleton in, go in in ghost movies and all all bones those bones won't stay together without the support of uh, other uh, uh, structural support uh, mainly from muscles uh, ligaments and uh, tendons the problem when you sit for a long time is your muscles tend to become uh, more weak your uh, joints become more weak because you are not using those uh, muscles and ligaments so the problem uh, once you start moving like uh, you'll be restricted to the desk uh, for most of your life but when you try to lift something heavy maybe when you try to uh, take a key or something from the floor at that time most of the problem at, that is the time when you will get some problem with your disc or uh, you may get, start getting back pain and all so what you have to understand is you you have to uh, understand that our body was uh, initially made or designed to do a few things like uh, you were supposed to squat uh, then uh, swimming then climbing trees running uh, the hard fact is that our body is not designed to sit for a long time when you sit for a long time all these muscles which are supposed to do th these things like climbing uh, running squatting and all those muscles start uh, what getting atrophied like uh, you might have seen people who have got stock the part which they get stock those those muscles will start uh, what you will see um, the muscles are gradually deteriorating and comparing to the other side so similarly when you do it, when you are uh, mostly confined confined to a chair your back muscles in general will get weakened your uh, core muscles to say from uh, starting from your neck to your lower back which supports your spine gets weak so that's how you get uh, lower back or upper back cervical uh, neck pain and all or lack of lower back pain so this is uh, one common issue we'll uh, first cover the problems what are what and all you may get in future uh, then we'll uh, deal with the uh, solutions or probable things you have to take care of the second thing what you will get is uh, circulatory disorders so you have a heart you know that blood is being pumped and it is circulated throughout your body and the blood is carrying oxygen nutrition uh, and all those stuff all those stuff but the, the fact which we don't know is uh, the heart pumps blood which is accumulated in it to all the parts things like your head hand and all uh, areas of your body but the blood has to come back to your heart only then it can pump again so if the circulation has to be completed uh, the blood has to return to your heart and that uh, and the second part means like the heart uh, the blood is is already circulated or pumped out if it has to come back your muscles should work and now people like you means like the people who are sitting in a chair for a long time or standing for a long time Uh, like people like teachers and all the problem is your circulation is half or like it is um, 
it is not properly that the circulation is not actually happening most of your blood tends to get pooled in your legs so that's how you may get varicose vein most of the people who sit for a long time or stand for a long time have a probability of getting varicose veins uh, mainly in dilated uh, vessels in your legs uh, you may get itching you may find uh, darkish uh, sorry uh, dark uh, blackish uh, marking marks in your legs those are the symptoms of varicose vein uh, then the third area is uh, you will get lifestyle disorders lifestyle disorders because uh see when you are sitting in a in one place the physical activity or the energy expenditure is very minimal but at the same time the amount of food what we eat is the same when it's like uh, you might have started uh, working uh, in this field maybe like 2 to 3 years or something but till then you are having a capacity of food which you are continuing till now even now even with this lifestyle also you are having the same amount of food so what happens is input is more than output the amount of calorie what you take in is more than what is required for your body to understand that i'll give you a few uh, values see uh, for a sedentary worker like people who sit on a desk or sit sit, on, sit somewhere and do the work like doctors maybe software engineers all those people hardly requires 1300 kilo calories let's say for example we calculate that like petrol we say 1 liter 2 liter we say uh, in kilo calories the amount of calorie which we take so uh, for people who have uh, minimal physical activity they hardly require like 1300 ca- kilo calories uh, for pregnant women it's like 3000 calories for uh, for people who do uh, more physical labor they'll need like 3300 calories so depending upon the physical activity our calorie should be restricted that is the main thing which is not happening why because we eat the amount of food which is required to fill our stomach we don't think of nutrition we don't think of calorie it's a truth it's not about you it's about everyone the only the two things which we care about food is taste and the amount of food we eat till it is full or we eat more than that if it is too tasty or if we like the taste we need more so the problem what comes is when you eat more calorie you tend to build up more body weight now at this point i have to mention it's not just the food okay there may be your colleagues who are fat but still eating less that is because uh, the hormone ba- hormone functioning also depends our uh, it is called as bmr basal metabolic rate that is controlled by our thyroid hormone and some other specific hormones so if there is any imbalance in these hormones even if you don't eat anything you tend to build up weight so that is a different issue we try to cover that also so <clears throat> the problems we mentioned is musculoskeletal disorders like pain neck pain back pain then the second thing is regarding circulatory system you may get to get uh, varicose vein and all those kind of problems the third problem what we mentioned is uh, lifestyle disorders because of gaining weight once you gain weight there are uh, so many options you will start getting pcod you will start getting uh, diabetes you say you will start getting other hormone imbalances uh, so and so on and so forth so these are the three, three main problems you you may get because of a, a sedentary life 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 or work style then the fourth thing is which most of the people uh, tend to ignore or uh, which are almost yeah, yeah is uh, the efficiency of your brain slowly start to deteriorate see once your circulation is not proper your brain tend to get very less amount of oxygen and all the all this nutrition you have like 5 liters of blood in your body and this 5 liters of blood has to be circulated uh, to your entire uh, system if uh, if like some 60 or 60 percent of your blood is pooled in your leg because your leg is not moving the return from your legs are very less basically what happens is the body has to 
uh, adjust with the 40 percentage of like what what it has in your in the circulation so your productivity slowly de declines so uh, in that case we have a solution for that or, or like a temporary fix most of us use a tea or a coffee slowly when we start to uh, feel that we are lagging behind or our brain is not functioning properly even though we had uh, more than what we need the problem is we tend to go for stimulants like tea coffee tea uh, tea coffee uh, smoking all that all those kind of stuff now again the problem is uh, the root cause for your uh, brain fog as we say is because your circulation is not proper it is not because you don't have any, uh, you, don't, you don't have sufficient food it is not that uh, you you don't have any problem other problems it is basically because what is there in your body itself is not being uh, what carried to your brain or your brain is not getting enough of oxygen and other nutrient nutrition so you uh, tend to use more of stimulants that in turn brings other problems when you start using uh, stimulants regularly uh, especially in case of tea and coffee you will start getting hypertension or uh, your um, what you said you become more short tempered because the amount of stress you can handle becomes less because see when you have stress stress is actually a good thing your body has the mechanism to handle the stress that is called as stress hormones the thing is these stress hormones has to be used only when it is critical situation only in specific situations for a short duration but the problem is when you when you uh, tend to use tea and coffee or uh, stimulants like that you are using these emergency hormones to keep your body running in uh, optimal performance and again the problem is these stimulants when you use these stimulants or when you use these stress hormones regularly uh, you tend to uh, like you might have started with the one tea a day then slowly it becomes two tea a day gradually progressing to half, every tea and sorry tea uh, on every half an hour that is because the amount of uh, stress hormone what is there in your body the reserve amount of hormone is get, getting depleted gradually and you need to stimulate your body to release whatever is like uh, there it's like pending whatever is there you tend to squeeze out that so what happens is once you uh, start getting into this, uh, this uh, stimulant habit you are using this reserve amount of uh, stress hormones and gradually when body wants some real stress management there is no reserve so you are, you tend to become short tempered short tempered uh another mechanism is when to, when you use more amount of stimulants yeah i mentioned only about tea and coffee uh, usually i mention like tea whether if it is white black or green coffee whether it is black or white uh, it's all the same it's a stimulant so if you think that okay tea tea coffee has some benefits there are more harmful effects than the benefits if you are confused what i am meaning people say that if you if you drink uh, green tea uh, you will lose weight uh, it is good for your heart similarly with coffee and uh, even chocolate so what you have to understand is these benefits are obtainable from other good sources uh, good sources specifically good food you don't have to go go behind any supplements or any super foods you have normal food which we usually don't include in our diet what we eat now is not our, our food it's like simply feeling something which is uh, what i mentioned before which uh, which is uh, what fulfilling the two criteria just to fill your stomach and for the taste so that is not actually how you ha how you have to look uh, or see the food what we eat okay so when you start uh, using stimulants the other problem is uh you start depleting some vitamins which is actually required to keep you calm for example vitamin b b12 is required to keep you calm if you don't get sleep at night um yeah let's come to, let's come to that later if you don't if you don't get proper sleep 
if you don't get uh, means like the same thing what i told you short tempered and also if you find yourself difficult to relax after a stressful event see the stressful event have, might have uh, happened and uh, if you are not able to relax or come down to the normal within a few uh, minutes or so or like let it take uh, one hour but still if you are, if you find yourself uh, in a very what do you call if you find your heart is still beating high uh, heavily if you find you are not able to forego for of that even that means you are already depleted your vitamin b12 mostly because of the stimulant or uh, excess sugar and uh, refined carb intake okay uh, the next problem which i which i have to address but yeah i'll say uh, most of the software engineers uh, as per i know is sleep deprived because uh, because of the job shifts uh, if, if they get a night shift they will have to uh, work the whole night or in case they have to finish a work they will tend to uh, be awake usually i don't uh, i if, if somebody asks me what to do with that or like uh, how to overcome the problem or uh, some solutions i don't give any solutions because uh, you are supposed to sleep in the night and you are supposed to work in the day then but then it's up to you uh, yeah anyway i'll give the suggestions what what you can do with that so if you have night shifts uh, what you have to think is see there are people who are awake at night when when it is night in india it is morning in in other countries like america canada and all those places if you go from this place means if you go from india to america or canada what happens is there is a jet lag it will take a few days for your body to adjust why i am saying that example here is see if you want to work in the night you have to make the night day and you have to make the day night here itself i hope you understand what i am communicating see for example again i will i will try to explain somebody is not getting my point so usually what happens is we'll be staying in yeah say let's say for example we are staying in kerala morning we'll be uh, coming back to home you will be exposed to sunlight see that is what decides which is day and night so the amount of light which is going into your eyes is what decides which is day and night so if you want to make uh, 9 pm a day you have to make sure you are surrounded with extreme bright sunlight i mean i mean sorry so extreme bright lightings so the body will be thinking that okay 9 pm is day here but the problem is your day time should be within 12 hours once the 12 hours is done you have to make sure it's night means the amount of light which is going to your eyes should be zero i hope you are getting the point this doesn't happen most of the time because once your shift is done it will be like morning 6 uh, o'clock or something sun starts to uh, come up and your sun is uh, your uh, your eyes get exposed to sun and then you go home again at home also the same the same thing happens windows will be open lights will be there so the body is not able to find the night because you are working in the night you had light from the screen light from uh, the light source all those stuff so the night somehow passed but in the morning what happens is the body after 12 hours the body is asking for the night is looking for night but nothing is happening it's still lit up so if you get a night shift that is what you have to do you will obviously you will have jet lag means the same way uh, you have to your body have to adjust once you go to another uh, place with a different time zone similarly your body will have difficulty in adjusting uh, to these uh, change in time zones okay then
so we have mentioned all the problems and one one of the one solution for one of the problems we'll again come back to the first problem we discussed that is musculoskeletal problems uh, like neck pain back pain and all those stuff see usually what we advise people is you do uh, one hour exercise but that is actually not a good thing in my uh, experience see especially when you are sitting for a long time just doing one hour exercise in the morning is not sufficient instead what is better is you have to do exercise for 5 minutes for every one hour i mean like between every one hour or like once you once you have worked for 55 minutes you should do 5 minutes of exercise it it need not be a huge i uh, like uh, one hour full yoga session like nothing like that you can sit on a chair uh you should move all the bodies all the body parts which can be moved uh it's not the way malayalathi parney kanyale sharira bhagangal anakkan pattunadellam oru 10 pravasham anakkan pattunna reethiyil ellam cheya rotation yeah um, if you explain that start with your eyes so you can move your eyes up and down do it for 10 times move it side to side 10 times rotation 10 times and clockwise 10 times if possible move your ears also forward rotation forwards and backwards similarly neck up and down side turning side stretching all those things starting from your uh, head to your till your toes including your um, spine sitting on the chair itself just twist to one side then twist back to the other side just do it slowly make sure you are not doing it uh, in a very fast manner just uh, make sure you are you are sure that you are getting enough stretch because see uh, when i mentioned about circulatory system i said in order for the blood to come back to your heart your muscles should move actually your muscles should stretch and uh, compress like see in case of uh, my bicep muscles it's not too huge but still i, I guess you can see see when you uh, uh, extend your hand the muscles are stretched but when you bend it it becomes a bulk this is what happens in your entire body whenever you move your body the muscles get stretched and then becomes a bulk so when when it stretches the blood means like yeah this pause for a minute uh, the heart which is pumping the blood has two vessels two two types of uh, tubes you can imagine one is like simple pvc pipe no blocks nothing when you uh, pump the blood it will simply flow to the part which is required but the um, but the vessel which is bringing back blood to your body is like ladder it has valve in it so it's like one valve here another valve here blood will get accumulated here when you press in between what happens is blood will climb this ladder and go up because this is a one way one way valve it will only open to uh, one side it will not open to the other side so what happens is when there is pressure it will climb one step then another step so when your body moves actually this blood will climb ladders and it will reach your heart so that is what happens with varicose vein also when you tend to uh, sit for a long time there is no muscle activity the blood gets pooled there and eventually what happens is these uh, blood vessels which is thick enough to hold this blood there due to the high pressure it will start bulging the side and that's how you get varicose vein so what i'm uh, what why i uh, explain this much is when you are doing exercise what i said from uh, head to toes what you have to uh, make sure is your body parts are being stretched and hold for for, a, for some time then come back don't just simply move like one to one to one to it's not it won't it is not going to help instead you have what you have to make sure is you have to stretch your body to one part or like if you are uh, knowing you are doing a next side stretch stretch it gradually come up slowly stretch to the other side you match and stretch slowly come up that's how you have to do okay so similarly your entire body your your shoulders do a rotation backward and forward elbows uh, stretch and bend uh, wrist up and down rotation uh, clockwise and anti clockwise clench your hands and squeeze your hands leave it do it for all the exercises for 5 to 10 times this is it. this will hardly take 5 to 10 minutes 
this you have to do for like after every 55 minutes this is one thing uh, and what happens is see uh, i told you will get uh, neck pain back pain all those thing that is because of muscle wasting when you do this kind of exercise every per, uh, like every after every 55 minutes what basically happens is your muscles are simply uh, um, said okay you are useful you are we need we need you in this scene otherwise what happens is you will simply sit for a long time and those muscles will think that okay we are we are useless and they will start slowly uh, reducing in the bulk okay uh second thing is the uh, circulation what i mentioned when you do uh, every after every 55 minutes when you do all this uh, joint movements basically it uh, enhances your blood, blood circulation eventually your uh, brain fog also will be gone then another thing what you can do is uh, deep breathing uh, that is actually good for uh, relieving the stress deep breathing is like uh, you yeah, preferably you can keep one hand on your abdomen and the other one on your chest just to ensure that you are breathing to your abdomen uh, that doesn't happen but when you inhale you should bulge your abdomen and when you exhale you have to press your abdomen with your hand see uh, this is actually uh, training your body to breathe how it is supposed to breathe our normal breathing is supposed to be an abdominal breathing humans are supposed to uh, have an abdominal breathing uh, this happens in case of uh, children you might have observed um, children below the age of 6 when they are sleeping if you observe their uh, abdomen and chest most of the time when they inhale their abdomens will bulge out and when they exhale it will collapse chest hardly moves that is because of the physiology that see if you have seen uh, the picture of the lungs in a hospital or somewhere uh, you can see that there is a hard muscle below the uh, lungs that is called as diaphragm that is supposed to be our primary breathing muscle means like when you breathe in this diaphragm which is uh, convex you can call it. when you breathe in this, this is supposed to go down and then when you breathe out this is supposed to squeeze your lungs up so that is how you are supposed to breathe so what happens is when you when the diaphragm goes down there is pressure in your abdomen your abdomen will be bulging so that's why i said this is the normal breathing pattern but the problem is we don't breathe like that if you have a doubt you can just check most of us will be breathing with our chest alone or a combination of that but chest will be used the problem with a chest breathing is um these chest muscles Yeah. So, doctor, your voice is low. Yeah, I just got a call. Is it audible now? Hello. You are. Am I audible? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Hear you. Uh, so. Uh, the problem with breathing with our chest muscle is i still have half an hour right okay uh, <clears throat> the problem with breathing with your chest muscle is these chest muscles are known as accessory breathing muscles that means you are not supposed to breathe with uh, your chest muscle until and unless there is a extra demand of oxygen that is when you have stress that is when you have a life threatening situation but the problem is when you start when you start uh, chest breathing as your normal our brain tend to sense it as you have a, as you as if you have you have you are already in some stressful situation i hope you are getting my point you are not supposed to breathe with your chest you are supposed to breathe with your abdomen but now we are breathing with your chest and uh, your mind is thinking why this guy is breathing with your with his chest maybe there is some problem so the problem with chest breathing is you will tend to stay anxious you will always be stressed so to correct that what we have to do is you have to practice abdomen breathing you have to teach your body okay that this is the way you have to breathe okay that can be done like the same way what i told uh, along with this exercise if possible 
uh, do this abdominal breathing for five times. Okay. I hope I should uh, give a practical. Huh? Somebody's mic is not good. Okay. Uh, I think I should make you practice that abdominal breathing right now. Because yeah, I think some of you are getting bored. Okay. Uh, sit straight. Sit with your back straight. This can be done even while uh, lying down, not in the office, of course. What I'm saying is uh, just before sleeping, if you practice this, it will be uh, good to, uh, it will make sure that you, the quality of sleep is better. Okay. I hope everyone is sitting with your back straight. Back straight means including your neck. Okay. Uh, because if somebody is using your mobile, don't tend to keep your neck down and do this back straight. Now keep your, uh, keep your right hand on your abdomen left hand on your chest. These two hands are kept like that because you have to observe your abdomen is moving and along with that this right hand should help your abdomen move inwards when you're breathing out. Okay so when you inhale that means when you uh, breathe in your abdomen should be moving out. Take a deep breath inhale abdomen out. Now when you breathe out slowly press your abdomen inwards. Squeeze your abdomen. Again, inhale, breathing. Release your right hand, let your abdomen go out and expand your abdomen. Okay. Exhale, breathe out, squeeze your abdomen in. Okay, I hope you are doing uh, it right because I can't see you. Okay, um, we'll move on to the other parts. So, uh, this is what this is the second thing which you can do uh, after every 55 minutes. Again, just to uh, refresh, starting from uh, head, uh, starting from your eye movements, uh, your neck, shoulder, elbow, uh, your entire body till your toes, all the movements for five times, and then uh, deep abdominal breathing for uh, five times every after every 55 minutes. This will ensure that you have uh, proper blood circulation throughout your body. You are, you are not ending up in musculoskeletal disorders like neck pain or back pain. And uh, yeah, also your brain fog. You will tend to be more focused and efficient in your work. These are the three things. <clears throat> then uh, my favorite part, diet. See, uh, you can address a few things like uh, hormone issues, excess weight gain, uh, yeah, then the side effects of night shifts. These things can be addressed in uh, slightly modifying your food pattern. See, there is something called as intermittent fasting. Uh, let me start from fasting and feasting. See, human body is designed to uh, be on feasting mode and then fasting mode, again feasting mode and then fasting mode. This was the usual pattern when we, when we, uh, we means not us, our ancestors who lived in the caves and jungles had. They were, uh, they hardly had any uh, lifestyle disorders. Why? Because they altered between fasting and feasting. See, in that situation, they hardly got any food. Whenever, whenever they got food, they are supposed to eat it full stomach because that has to that food has to be uh, reserved in your body till the next meal, which is which they were not unsure about. So. Feasting was the basic design of our body. Whenever we eat, that will be stored in your body. Regardless of uh, whether you need it or not, if you eat too much, that is going to be stored in your body. Okay? So that can be changed. The second thing is fasting. Usually, what I said, like, when uh, people were living in caves and jungles, they didn't have the luxury of uh, three meals, four meals, or five meals. Uh, and uh, snacks in between. So 
so what happened is whatever they ate was stored in the body and that stored reserve uh, reserved food or the uh, fat it is stored in fat form was reused so basically there was no chance of uh, getting obesity but now the problem is the same body which is uh, designed for fasting and eating and fasting is now under or the feasting mode three meals a day four meals a day the problem is there is no fasting now uh, great people and eh, great people with great minds created religion and they infused fasting in that in some form like 50 days fasting 30 day fasting fasting in uh, every monday and thursday for getting good husband all kind of uh, logic but the ultimate logic was to make people fast so that they will be healthy See, if you are healthy obviously that will be radiated in your face and obviously you will get a good spouse that was the logic but the problem is uh, somehow we don't uh, do that also now people have started uh, what doing research in uh, fasting and they have found that you should be doing fasting but the problem again is we don't like to be without food we need food for many reasons because see when you are sad you will eat more uh, when you are when you have enough time and have nothing to do you will eat you will snack if you don't uh, drink enough water in sense of hydration if it is not there again our body will crave for food because see when we eat food there is some some amount of moisture in that so body will tend to uh, means body will give you signs that you are thirsty but the problem is you don't drink mainly maybe because there is no enough good toilets uh, nearby or maybe you are traveling or you don't want to waste your time uh, going to uh, toilet and all the stuff so you we tend to drink very less amount of water even when we are thirsty so the body does what it does is okay you are not drinking okay so i'll do something else it will start giving you craving so that you need something which has moisture the problem again comes is you don't need something which has moisture you'll go for snacks which is very much uh, dehydrated just calories so there are so many reasons why you snack in between that is not because you have you don't have enough calories in the meal so people have designed a new diet which is called as intermittent fasting in which you can eat when you want to eat but at the same time you will have the benefits of fasting now how it is done is you will have to make minor adjustments in the eating window as they call the um, most of us let's take a, let, let's take an example we we'll eat our uh, breakfast uh, morning at 8 o'clock lunch somewhere between 1 or 2 or something like that and dinner by uh, 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock now what we have to do is you have to cut short the time uh, and make it like if you start if you eat your breakfast by 8 you have to end your dinner by 7 or 8 pm okay so that is 12 hours of eating window now depending on your body condition you can you, depending on your body condition and your will power you can cut short it to even 6 hours so basically what happens is uh you can eat like from 6 o'clock to i guess 2 o'clock but then from uh, afternoon 2 o'clock till morning 8 o'clock your body stays hungry now you may ask what is the difference difference is see somehow you will be uh, i'm not speaking about people with night shift i'm speaking about people who sleep at the night okay night shift people diet will uh, speak later okay so usually you will be sleeping like by 9 or something like that and till morning 8 you will be you will be sleeping and you will not be disturbed by your stomach so what you are doing is you are extending the time in which your stomach is getting rest or like you are not getting food inside from 
uh, afternoon 2 o'clock till uh, evening 9. So that gives an extra few hours, like, like 18 hours. So it's like 18 hours of fasting. At the same time, you are eating and taking enough calorie and nutrition in the daytime when you are supposed to have. Okay? That is actually called as intermittent fasting. Now, there are few options uh, in which uh, you can trick this again. See, uh, fasting or uh, fasting basically means zero calorie diet. Zero calorie. Means uh, the main culprit, uh, culprit behind your uh, weight gain because of excess calorie or food intake is a hormone called as insulin. You might have heard this uh, hormone name insulin from diabetic patients. See, what basically this insulin hormone does is whenever you eat a food, uh, food what we eat nowadays is mostly uh, carbohydrate rich. So whenever we eat, there will be equivalent amount of insulin produced. For example, if one glucose is, uh, if you are consuming one uh, molecule of glucose, there should be one uh, unit of insulin produced in your body. Let's say, for example. So what happens is when you eat full one full plate of rice, that is equivalent to like uh, thousand molecules of glucose, for example. Let's say there will be thousand thousand amount of thousand uh, units of insulin produced in your body. So what this uh, insulin does is it it takes the uh, glucose molecules to the cell, which has to con convert this to energy. But the problem is when you have low physical activity, you don't need that much energy. So maybe like 20 percentage of will be used in the cells for the daily activities. But the problem is this again, uh, whatever is remaining, that 80 percentage of uh, glucose what is remaining has to be uh, taken out from your bloodstream. So insulin then takes this to liver and it converts, to, converts it to fat and that is stored in your body. Okay, so until and unless there is a presence of insulin, the problem is insulin is, is a growth hormone. It never allows, you, allows the body to reuse the fuel what is stored in your body. So if you want to reuse your body fat and reduce the body weight, uh, you will have to make sure there is no insulin in your body or minimal insulin, the amount of insulin should be minimal. So that is the uh, key hormone which determines whether your body is going to fasting or if it is uh, still uh, in this uh, growth stage. So in order to uh, reduce the amount of fast, uh, sorry, uh, amount of uh, insulin in your body, what you can do is cut down the carbs what you eat, carbohydrate food what you eat, carbohydrate in the sense rice, wheat, uh, whatever ends up in glucose that will stimulate uh, insulin. So rice, wheat, uh, oats, and uh, sugar, and whatever form you take, whether if it is boiled rice or dosha, appam, mediapam, whatever it is, if it is made of rice, wheat, uh, rice or wheat or oats or any cereals, or uh, if it contains sugar, that is going to spike your insulin. You are not going to a fasting stage. So even if you take three meals, now when I said intermittent fasting, I said uh, you have to cut out your eating window to uh, like six hours. And I said, OK, eight o'clock if you are eating in the morning, you have to stop your uh, food by afternoon, two o'clock. What you can do is you can make your breakfast and lunch with the, with the normal stuff, which contain glucose. OK, but if you want, you can eat the dinner, but make sure it is zero calorie. I guess somebody will be having some doubts. If you don't eat rice, wheat, oats, uh, and stuff containing sugar, what else you are supposed to eat, right? Nobody has that doubt? I think you'll be knowing other than huh? We can eat fruits instead of. Uh, OK. You ah, I'm good, He was there in the natural cure. That's why he said. Yes. <laughs> see, there are options like see fruits actually 
it's not uh, 100% uh, sugar free means uh, if you eat uh, fruits which is equivalent to uh, 100 units of uh, uh, carbohydrate that is actually 50 50 50% 50 will will be converted to uh, glucose and only 50% will be i mean sorry 50% <laughs> will be converted to fructose which is not uh, spiking your insulin only uh, 50 percentage will be converted to glucose which will uh, spike your insulin it means like if you eat a uh, full pray full plate rice which contains 1000 uh, units of energy that is going to be 1000 units of glucose but if you eat 1000 units of energy from fruits that is going to be 500 units fructose and 500 units glucose that is so that is comparatively better but i won't prefer fruits for dinner when i speak like zero uh, uh, calorie or if you don't want to spike insulin at all Uh, fruits is actually not a good option but for breakfast and lunch fruits is actually a good option because see usually what you eat in the breakfast is like either rice yeah mostly rice items especially south south india you will be having rice uh, products only put dosa idiyam you know whatever it is that is uh, rice only and the major problem is you are filling this uh, your stomach with with this um, carbohydrate rich food and there is no other stuff like fiber fibers or something and the entire amount of or rather the entire volume what you take is going to end up as glucose and that is going to spike your insulin but instead of that if you take fruits in the morning full stomach fruits what happens is whatever uh, means like usually your insulin uh, uh, demand was like 1000 units with rice based or wheat based uh, food if you eat full stomach of fruit your the amount of insulin is going to be almost even below half even below 50 percent okay so that is better for lunch and dinner but not for dinner sorry lunch and breakfast not for dinner for dinner what you can do is uh, you can include uh, vegetables vegetables in the sense it uh, usually when i say vegetables or when you hear vegetables commonly what people think is salad eh? the common salad what is made at your home that is not the only option what we have uh, if you check in swiggy and zomato latest trends you will have chicken caesar salad uh, almost like minimum 20 varieties of salads you will get that is actually uh, non insulin spiking because that will have uh, vegetables then uh, some form of non vegetarian chicken or meat or something that is actually protein and fat uh then you will have some salad dressings or something like with oil and fat or something so these all things does not spike your insulin so effectively what you have done is you have ate your dinner but at the same time that is not spiking your insulin so that is going to be counted as zero calorie in your fasting i hope you understand the concept until and unless you are you are stimulating your insulin you are in fasting mode so how much ever calorie from carbohydrates you are reducing that much amount of calorie is going to be reused from your body you are going to lose your uh, excess fat okay when you use uh, when you lose excess fat especially from your abdomen what happens is yeah i'll explain that what happens is you will start reducing your lifestyle disorders like pcod diabetes uh, hypothyroidism uh, hormone imbalance etc etc whatever is available in this market named under the so called lifestyle disorders all these lifestyle disorders are because of the abdominal fat which is which you have accumulated from a, a long period of life and that has to be addressed with a low glucose diet which is possible from the method what what i just mentioned okay now regarding the people who are doing uh, night duty see uh, the time zone which you are working again for example what what i uh, mentioned in the morning you have to eat in the morning of that time zone means when you are working in the night you this night okay 9 pm you are working from 9 pm till morning 9 am let let us guess like that so your morning starts from 9 pm till 9 am so you have to eat in that window now the problem is usually with respect to the sun's day and night 9 pm is night if you eat in the night time you are supposed to gain weight 
that is a normal thing but if you crack your circadian rhythm that's what i said in the morning you have to uh, make sure uh, when you are working at the night times you should have to make sure your uh, surrounding should be well lit confusing your mind to take it as day at the same time after 12 hours make sure your body is again being uh, confused to think that it is night giving it pin drop like complete uh, darkness so if you crack that way there is no problem in eating uh, from 9 pm or at the night shifts that is okay but again make sure you don't take too much of calorie just because of just because you want to keep your body awake doesn't mean that you have to drink coffee take some snacks nothing like that it should be the same way as, as i said if you are working in the morning i said the example of how healthy or how the dieting diet uh, patterns should be shifted same way if you are making nights day same pattern you have to restrict your meals to two or three meals max uh, the first and second meal can be carbohydrate rich or whatever you want but the third meal or towards the last or my means like towards the starting of your night well, i mean uh, i guess you are understanding right the last meal should be zero calorie or uh, vegetables and all those stuff zero carbohydrate diet if you if you do like that that is going to work okay uh, i think i have three more minutes three or five minutes if you have any doubts you can ask yeah people might have questions lot of questions they can ask especially regarding diet yeah <laughs> you are telling about varicose vein right yeah. so yeah. what is what is the remedial measure that you preventing that one if you already have varicose vein the treatment is different okay if you already have varicose vein the treatment is different what i mentioned is to the you are you the people who are starting into a software a job or if you are starting to this profession you are going to end up having varicose vein because you are going to sit for long time so to prevent varicose vein you have to uh, do this kind of uh, body movements exercise and all the stuff that will work but if you already have varicose vein uh, ma main thing is uh, you have to do the exercise for this uh, the same thing uh, neck to uh, toes you have to make sure you are giving uh, exercise and you have to stress more on your calf muscles means like the kal uh, varicose vein verna bhagatha muscles nalla workout that is our Uh, you have to make sure you are moving your uh, what ankle joint yeah ankle joint you have to move up and down for 10 times maybe like every half an hour while you are working while you are sitting at the desk you have to make sure your ankle you are moving your ankle up and down for uh, 10 times every uh, half an hour that is one thing second thing is you have to make sure you are avoiding all kind of uh, spicy food uh, excess spice excess salt stimulants everything is going to damage your blood vessels i i guess you are uh, on to more spices i mean like achar and all pickles right you are smiling yeah i got the point <laughs> see the, why i am saying is i have seen people uh, with varicose vein and if you start questioning them from the top to the bottom uh, like one and a half hours if you take consultation you will end up the main culprit is old food palanganji angane ulla palaya aaharangal if you if you are having the habit of keeping food inside the fridge fridge and then reheating and eating that is one problem second thing is uh, if you take more spice uh, more excess salt and all kind of thing uh, all these three combine together to form pickle so if you take if you take more pickle also this is going to happen uh, then excess stress is going to uh, affect your uh, blood vessels if it affects your leg that is going to become varicose vein if it affects your uh, uh, what do you call um the area around your anus that is going to be uh, piles if it is going to affect your heart uh, blood vessels that is going to be a cardiac issue if it is going to your, uh, affect your uh, vessels which are going to your brain that is going to be a stroke everything is same but the area which is affecting is different then uh, to uh, recover from that uh, the thing what you have to eat what you have to make sure you are eating is uh, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli uh cabbage brussels sprouts um cauliflower and leafy vegetables 
you have to make sure you are eating more of this because these contain um, some specific uh, contents which are actually helping you to recover uh, means like yeah it helps in recovering from uh, vessel damages okay next question No questions. No more questions. All are clear with this stuff. See, if they ask more questions, they have to cut down their uh, meals. <laughs> so oh, you have uh, other meetings, right? Okay. <laughs> no, no, not meeting. They are asking huh? more questions. Means they have to cut down their meals, their food items. Yeah. They have to better, cut. Down. Better to save. Better be safe than sorry, right? <laughs> For a neighbor, then no, no questions. <laughs> see, uh, see, um. What I uh, would like to say is uh, the session what I just gave you uh, is a very um, what condensed version of my um, theory class regarding diet that usually lasts up to like four to five hours. So I have missed so many points and still I want to uh, highlight some things. See the basic uh, concept which I want to give you now or the point which I want you to think from today onwards is See, I don't say that you should not work, but the problem is when you go for work, when you are uh, spending your time, energy, and all those stuff in uh, earning money, you should make sure that you don't have to spend it somewhere in the end, uh, means like after a few 10 or 15 days, 15 years. Uh, you should not uh, think that, okay, if I, if I had uh, taken care of my health, uh, I wouldn't have ended up here. That should not come in your mind. That's what I'm saying. So it is possible. See, usually the problem is we are not aware of what is um, what is diet. We don't know what is uh, exercise, or we don't have any idea about that. We, if my field is medicine, I know only about medicine. If my field is software, I only know about software. Nothing about health. That should not happen. So you should have a minimum awareness about your health, uh, and uh, you should do a minimum amount of thing which you which should. Uh, improve the quality of your life in the long run. Okay. And people are misled with the you know uh, easy um, uh, tips for weight loss,ing uh, and being healthy, yeah. all those kind of things. And and many uh, articles you'll be reading. Uh, all those things will be saying this is good, this yeah. is not good. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, Arun has. Uh, remembered the first sentence which I usually say uh, before taking the class. So you cannot, <laughs> that goes like this. You cannot buy health with money. Insurance companies, uh, all those people, advertisement, they will say that, okay, you don't worry about your health. We'll take care, or take care about it. You just, you just have to pay a small amount um, as premium. That's it. Remaining, we'll take care. That doesn't happen. Okay. They may give the money, but the quality of your life is going to uh, be uh, damaged. So that thing you have to make sure. Uh, so your health is your own responsibility. No one else is going to take care about that. Uh, so you will have to uh, find what is right and what is wrong. There are so many uh, quick fixes, uh, which, uh, which may have some results on a short duration, but most of them will definitely have side effects on a long run. Okay, so uh, instead of going for uh, quick fixes, Doctor, you can share your, uh, you know, uh, consultation details if somebody wants to reach out to you uh, for any consultation. Uh, there might be people over here who might want to do that, uh, but I'm not sure. So you can do that uh, or you can share that with me so that I can share with them in the group. Okay, yeah, uh, if you are interested in a, a consultation, uh, I, I yeah I think Arun is having my contact. You can contact him. He'll give my uh, contact details. Uh, you can speak with me for an appointment. Can yeah. you see? Yeah, yeah. We will just uh, paste his uh, mobile number uh, uh, in the um, chat box. Okay. So I think there yeah. are um, outside of uh, one more uh, one more thing one more thing. Uh, if in case you are contacting me, make sure uh, you most of them uh, prefer to contact through WhatsApp. If you are contacting through WhatsApp, 
do have some uh, criteria in your mind like at least send your name okay i am so and so uh, contacting from this place or i got this contact from uh, this source and so on and because most of the time uh, when i say uh, to give my contact i had so many experiences so people will say hi what hi <laughs> okay so uh, <laughs> Yeah. So I think there are no more doubts. Or uh, uh, anyone else have any uh, questions? Mohammad Safir, do you want to ask something? You can ask in Malayalam also. Understand Malayalam. <laughs>